Okay, so I'm here with uh, a special treat for you. Uh, a lot of you guys like the day in the life of a tugboat captain. Well, today we're going to talk to a real tankerman, what it's like to be on a barge and how to load product. And uh, I'm here with one of my favorite tankermen, Scotty. And Scotty, uh, he and I have something in common. Um, when you guys saw my last video, you, some of you realized I grew up on an island in Maine. Scotty grew up on an island, but not in Maine, right? No, oh, in Ireland. Yeah, that's right, exactly. So uh, th that's uh, kind of cool. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, how you started what, when, when you were a kid and uh, when, you, when you came up through and decided that water was what you wanted to do and how you found your way to working on a boat? Yes, sir. Uh, I grew up on an island in the middle of the Chesapeake Bay called Smith Island. The only way to get there is by boat. You can't get there by car or nothing like that. So. I grew up on the water basically my whole life, and uh, when I was a kid, my dad owned a boat yard, so I used to work on boats on, on my whole life, so when I moved on the mainland, I started building boats for a little while. And, oh, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, cool. so I built, I did that for nine years, and then uh, I have a lot of friends out here that work out here, and uh, you know, I grew up on the water, and I love the water, so I talked to them, and uh, well, basically, then I started working out here. Basically, same thing as living on an island. A bit <laughs> I agree. I this agree. Just a little bit smaller. That's all it is. As if but, uh, you can get along with a few people on an island, you can get along with a few people you, on a tug of a barge, right? right? Yep. So, 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 uh, when you came to work in the industry, you came to this company itself, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And 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 you started out not as a, a, a tankerman. How did you start? Yep. I started out with that can. Uh, my wife's from Tangier Island, a neighboring island from Smith Island. So, oh, really? Uh, I knew Captain Sykes on the Roanoke. He uh, he brought me on as his deckhand and kept me trained me and left me as his deckhand. And when I finished all my tugboat work, he let me go on the barges and they would show me how to load and discharge and everything like that. So you that. did your training while you yeah. were working as a deckhand? Yep. Yeah. So basically when I started, I knew everything. I just had to do it basically. But, oh, great. But I had a one tankerman, shoreside tankerman. He stays at home and he gets the call and goes and, you know, pumps wherever he needs to go. And uh, yep. he knew my mind, so. He would, he would always let me go in the shack and said he always let me work the barge. And oh, neat, neat. So you got yep. a little like, experience yep. on the side on your time off and yep. all that. Oh, yep. good, good, so good. He said, uh, if you need me, just come and get me. So, <laughs> so well, I had to go get him a few times, but he was a good tanker, and he taught me a lot. So I was thankful for that. Oh, that's cool. So yep. so, 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 you were a deckhand for a few years, and then you did your stuff, and then you moved to, and you, you got your, there's some schooling that you had to go through. Yep. You, you had yep. to take a tankerman's course, a PIC or something yep. like that. Yep. Uh, I went to my tags in Baltimore. Uh -huh. I had to do that for a week. Then I had to go back and take my firefighter class, which I already have my firefighter one for me in the fire department over sure. on the island. Yeah. But it has to be dated within five years. Sure. So. And then the worst possible time was in the middle of August when I had to take that firefighter. <laughs> oh, you're probably all yeah, hot. In gear, the, oh all man, it's got to be hot. It was hot. <laughs> I said, never again will I do this. I forgot how hot it really was because I haven't been in a fire company in a while. So, so now you now you've been a, a tankerman for as long as I've known you, and uh, and and you uh, you you mostly do bunker work, is that right? Yep. yep. And, and, and can you kind of explain how there's a difference between the the black and clean oil versus the bunker jobs? I mean, the the, the guys go up and down the beach versus what you do? Yep. Yep. Uh, bunkering basically, I fuel ships from other countries. You know, they uh. The heavy black oil is basically what black oil is. It's unrefined diesel fuel is basically what it is. Oh, is that right? Yeah. It's just like basically what when they make the diesel fuel or black oil is what you have left over. Okay, yep. And then they refine it, then that's where you get your diesel fuel from. I got you. So basically that's just old. You have to heat it at like 122 degrees just to pump it. Right, right, right. Or clean oil, you know, you can basically pump that at any time. Sure, sure. But, uh... That's got to make it nice in the winter. You don't have to shovel your deck. So yeah, it feels good. <laughs> it feels good if it's like 10 degrees. You can lay on the pipeline. It's nice and warm. Now, do you ever have situations where you have a load and it gets cold? Yes, yes. Uh, sometimes they'll take us in the load early. You know, if the dock has something going on, like, you know, barges that do got in dock. Sure. Or, yep. Like if they have a load coming in, they'll load us early so we can make our delivery. But then you know how it is. Some ships get canceled and right. delayed. Yep. You know, like one time I sat on, I sat on it for... I think it's like a week and a half. Oh. And we load 
loaded it like, you know, and set it work between 120 and 130 degrees. Yep, yep. And by the time I finally got to the ship to pump it off, I got a temperature gauge. I did a pipe on. It was sure. like 85, 80 degrees. And, and, and they don't cancel it at that point? Because I know no. there's no other, like, like, like other uh, products that get canceled. Yeah. But, but, but bunkers, they'll, no, they'll take they, it. I don't think I've ever loaded and had it canceled. Now, okay. Now, sometimes, like, you know, where the EPA changed and everything, yep. we do that very low sulfur, yep, yep. where they lower the sulfur now. You know, we've loaded that, and the sulfur be wrong, and have to go back and pump oh, okay. it off that way. But I think the way it works is, you know, the ship's agent is who orders the fuel. Sure. And uh, I think what happens is uh, they've already paid for it, so I think basically they have to get it. Right, right, I right. I ain't never had one canceled on me before anyway. That, that does, does, does the barge that you work on, is it a heated barge? She has she has a boiler on so, her. So but it has the ability if you yeah, need to do that. But So when, when you had that load that was really cold, were you able to pump it? Yeah, I, well, I pumped it, but it took like... Usually I can do 500 ton an hour yep. pump discharge wise. I think I was doing probably 60 or 70 ton an hour. <laughs> 500 it took to 60 forever. <laughs> I think it took like 15 hours. It discharge. gets a lot more viscous. And it, yep, and it was only like a thousand tons, so wow. a two hour job turned into 15, 16 hour job. <laughs> it happens, but wow. okay. they still got it. So, so can, can you kind of tell us uh, in, in, in about how your day works? Um, I, I don't know if you saw my video of, of what my day is like when yeah. I wake up and that sort of stuff. Can you kind of walk us through what a typical day for a, yeah. a tankerman is yeah. like? Basically, we do 12-hour watches on here. I do from noon to midnight, and then my second man, it, he also works on here with me. He, he so works, there's just two of you yeah, on the boat? two of us, yeah. yeah. He works from midnight to noon, so basically... When we get up, we check the orders, see if we have any orders or deliveries or anything like that. And uh, if they, uh, if we have a delivery, the office will send us a sheet with like the temperature and yep, the yep. API and yep. the fuel and all that. So we'll go ahead and uh, we have an knowledge program where it figures out all our numbers and stuff yep, like that. Yeah, sure. And then you know you guys will come pick us up and take us to the dock, and then we just go there and uh, you know we'll have to do like a we have to do like a pre-transfer conference to make sure the dock's got the right numbers. Oh, good, 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 good. So it's not just a simple hookup. you got to ma no. make sure. Well, we're talking millions of dollars. Yeah, right? million. Yeah. You don't want to make any mistakes. Right, sure. That's a lot of money, you know, especially a full load on here. It's like, I think it's like a million, three hundred thousand gallons Yeah, on yeah here. I think so. so that's a lot of money if we and, do a full load. And, and do, you, do you have environmental precautions, too? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, we have to... Uh, you know, we have to have, we got these little meters on, you know, in case, like, the sulfur or something like that's too hot. Yeah, yeah, They'll so that'll protect you. And, let us know, and yeah. do, you do you have stuff that protects you? If, or, or what do you have, what, what provisions do you have to make sure that oil doesn't get in the water? Okay. Like, you, you have a guy on deck all the time? Yeah, we, we always, you know, we don't, we don't, we always stay on deck, you know, mostly, like, you know, go get a drink of water or something sure, like sure. that, you know, a few minutes, but, you know, basically just keep making your rinds and everything. And then we have, like, High level alarms. And, yep, yep. You know, like if it's dark. A lot of people ask me when they when they see me pushing what all those lights are. Oh, okay. and, and so, so I've explained the high level yeah. alarms. Yeah. And 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 uh, that and do you have uh like like emergency? You know, isn't there a line that you can pull that? that yeah. When uh when we're alongside the ship, you know, like say the ship miscalculated how much sure. fuel we got because that's yeah. happened before. Oh really? Is overflowed your tanks. Oh wow. wow. Yeah. You know, my wife's uncle. Uh, they were pumping diesel fuel to a ship, and uh. The ship never even saw it. My wife's uncle looked. And it was, you know, you got act the ships. It's got air vents yeah, in the fuel sure. tanks. Yep. And they looked, and the, the oil was just coming right out of the air vent. Wow. You know, going overboard. Wow. They didn't have your scuffers. That's another thing. You, know, you always make sure your scuffers are in because they'll save your job too. And the scuffers are, are, are the holes where where uh, rainwater and stuff would normally flow out, but they have to plug those up in case that if there's a, a spill to, to mitigate anything. a spill from going into the water and that sort yeah, of thing. If it spills on deck, it's still bad, but it ain't as bad as going into water. Right, <laughs> exactly. Right. That's that's one thing you don't want is oil going overboard. Yeah, yeah. And so, so, so I didn't I didn't realize that you guys work a twelve hour shift. Yep. That's something that I, I get a lot of comments of uh, people asking us, uh, "Boy, six and six, how do you ever get any sleep and all that sort of stuff?" And of course, I get used to it after yeah, a while. Yeah, I think it, it really is. Yep. You know, I've been doing this long enough where six and six is fine with me. And what I try to tell people is that upper wheelhouse is real small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, can't, I can't leave for six hours. Yeah, I can drink too much coffee. Because <laughs> yeah, I know most most all the techs do six hours. I'm right. say now a lot of bars just like we do 12 and some will do six and six yeah i think some do like eight and eight or eight and four or something i think I, barges can basically make up their own schedule just as yep, long yep. as you don't go over 12 hours a day not, that's, not, the, that's the sure sure and, and that's got that, that that's governed by the 
the restrictions the Coast Guard puts on, on all of us, but uh, so that we don't get tired and make stupid mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> Especially out here, and like I was, you know, telling my other man on here, it's always good to have two set of eyes. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, like I double, you know, he'll double check me, and I'll double with me. So where there's two of you on board, um, a lot of people have a lot of questions about how we grub the boat, how we put food on the boat, and I've gone over how, you know, the 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 mate's deckhand does the cooking for dinner for mm -hmm. us, and that we have an allotment of money to buy food for the tug. How, how does it work for you guys? Yep. Well, uh, I mean, we don't need numbers exactly. Yep. I know the tugs, y'all get a collar. So Correct. Right? Yep. But uh, our, money, our grub money is put in our check. We yep. get paid. So uh, basically, when I'm on the way, I because it's just the, it's just two of them on the boat right now. So it so so yep. because so you're saying that you you buy your own food and yeah. Yep. But uh, basically, what I do is like. When I'm driving up from Maryland, I'll stop in Delaware somewhere and get groceries. Yep. And then when we get a board lead, and then, you know, you get Patrick, my second man, he'll yep. uh, go to the store the next time. We basically split it up with each other. Oh, encounter. nice, nice. So, so you guys yep. are still eating together. Yeah, we just... Oh, good, good. You know, good. Whatever we want, we eat, basically. <laughs> now, this is an odd question, and you're such a likable guy that it probably doesn't matter to you, but... One of the things I've always thought was weird about working on a barge was that if you had to work on a barge where it's just the two of you and you had a personality conflict with the other guy that you worked with, uh, it's got to be a very small space. Have, yeah. you, have you had it or have you I heard of any situations I've like that? heard of people, you know, you know, have, <laughs> you know, problems and stuff like that, but me and my second man, he comes from Alabama, so we both got an accent, okay. so we fit right <laughs> into each other. Good, good, you know? good. Well, that's great. Yeah, we fit right in from the beginning, me and him did. So. Well, Scotty, I thank you so much for yeah, coming and welcome. talking to the people. Everyone, everyone wants to see the barges, and I tell them I can't really show operations on the barge because of the restrictions that, you know, it's mm -hmm. company, it, I don't own these barges, you don't yeah, own them, so we're lucky enough to get on the We power. work them and that's That's it. exactly <laughs> right, we're just employees. Yeah. But before I go, I do want to show you, I'm not as short as you think I am. <laughs> <laughs> See, he's a big guy, but the bow's going this way. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you so much. Scotty, yep, good job, you. brother. Yep, thank All you. Right. <laughs> well, I hope that helps you out.